Welcome to Famous Fortunes, I hope you are well today, I hope you are well, not my king apparently, watching what's happening in Australia, King Charles goes to Parliament, uh, I, 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 I kind of, or I want to say a lot about this, but uh, given it's Australia and they're Australian politicians, it's very dangerous to speak out about them actually, you can't say anything, uh, otherwise you end up being finding yourself in a lot of trouble, and all the rest of it, it's, uh, yeah, what, what can I say, folks, what can I say, it is the way it is in Australia, so I guess it's all fine and dandy, not my king, apparently, not my king, said a bunch of other things, I have a lot to say on this topic that I want to say, uh, but uh, it's too spicy, probably, for this channel, and for, for this platform, I, I would imagine, uh, very spicy, I would say it if I was like a Joe Rogan type, you know what I'm saying? And Spotify had my back. I would, I would unleash the nuke. Let's just say that I would, I would go nuclear on this situation. But uh, in any event, you can only imagine for the time being how I'd talk about that. But uh, welcome to the show. We're going to talk about Doria today and Doria's millions. This is a Nosy Parker special. We're going to investigate based on yesterday's episode, just where millions came from because it's speculated that she has quite a lot of money in the bank. Let's say, and we're going to find out just how it got there today in detail. So we're going to do that today on the show, The Greatest Show on Earth with your host, Lord of the Orbs. Subscribe, like, do the things, comment, all the rest of it. We have some great questions that have come in overnight and I'm going to talk about them uh, towards the end of the show. A question about Solomon and Sheba, some interesting things there. Music being some type of witchcraft question. I'm just paraphrasing the questions, right? So to sort of titillate you for later in the episode. And then a question about entities and uh, 3,000 Years of Longing, we'll talk a bit about that as well, I'm very much looking forward to it all, we will talk about that later on, we're going to get into some hardcore card reading first to satisf satisfy everyone's urges, let's say, that's what we're going to do today on this Tuesday episode of Famous Fortunes, Tuesday, 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 let's continue, let's break into the show, let's do it, let's do it, first question, that I want to ask here is how many millions does Doria have in the bank? Well, this is what we need to know. Number one, we need to know if she actually, has she actually become rich in some strange way, I guess, uh, some aberration of nature or won the lottery. I don't know what, but has she become rich and how rich is she? So let's have a look at Doria's overall wealth first reading. What is her overall wealth picture like? Uh, Doria, Doria Raglan, Raglan's to riches, as we're going to say on today's show, and perhaps other shows we've mentioned this before. Let's have a look. How wealthy is Doria? Cards are hot. Many people speculate Archwell gave them money, but yeah, we'll find out today. Ooh, Page of Wands, Prince of Wands, excuse me, Prince of Wands, it's Harry's archetype, Strange Four of Swords, Harry's in there, Eight of Wands. Where's the money? Show me the money. Page of Swords. Nine of Swords. Prum, prum. Prince of Swords and the High Priestess. Strange. Offered money to keep silent. Coming up again, folks. That was yesterday's theme. It's come. The same cards have kind of come up again here. Which is a little bit on the odd side, I think. A little bit on the odd side. Indeed. Pencil to the ready. Offered money to, to say silent. High Priestess. Harry's coming in here. Strong energy, Harry coming in, sort of this taking a very neutral approach. And I'm not seeing riches. We're going to ask how rich she is in a minute. But a uh, lot of you know, Harry coming in, staying silent, offered money to stay silent, not talk about things or children energy. A lot of energy coming in or energy being moved. Let's say that. That's energy being moved around. Uh, and this is a sort of worry and concern here with the Nine of Swords. So strange cards. Okay, strange cards. Let's let's continue. The cards are the way they are. Doesn't look like she's mega wealthy, but you never know what the real story is. That's what we're here today to look at. It's what we are here today to talk about. Three thousand years of longing. I think it piqued a lot of people's interest, uh, and a lot of people have watched it yesterday and, and gotten into it. It's, an, it's really not. A, it's a beautiful piece of cinema. I think it's, you know, it's, it's intellectual on a certain level, but it's not sort of, you know, like like a low-grade production, let's say. It's it's great. I think it's great. So let's continue. Ask the question, how many millions does Doria have under her, you know, in her bank account or in her control somehow? You know, they could have trusts and all this weird stuff. How many millions does she have? Let's see what we have on the cards. Cards 
cards are hot. Ooh, top card, Ten of Swords. Three of Wands. Come on, give me the Pentacles. Four, okay, she's holding on to the Pentacles. Four of Coins coming in. The Star, what's that? 17. How much did someone say in the... This is kind of the number I was looking at, Page of Pentacles. Right, seven. Someone said it was in the region of... 17 million or did they say doria has 17 million in the bank barbara says yesterday i read all the comments all right i read all the comments now so 17 million i think that's what it is given these cards the star is the 17th card here which is it's strange it's a strange finding i'll say that here's her holding on to the money this is ma like manifested the money kind of kind of thing uh this ant ants bringing our attention here to the 10 of uh, Ten of Swords, uh, interesting, and the Three of Wands. It's like it's, I don't want to say hush money again, Ten of Swords, like something's kind of endings coming in, uh, you know, this is like a final thing, we're cutting it off, whatever it is, she's sort of, let's say she's uh, been observant over a situation, mm, I, I again, I, it reeks of payoff, but you know, there it is, the star, the big, the big 17, 17 million, someone said, I think I can, that's, you know, that's very plausible here, this is really not a number, this is her holding on to her money, manifesting her money, that type of thing, this is something that's happened before this money came and came and came about, basically, uh, so that's, that's what it is, uh, interestingly, interestingly, oh, did I mention there's going to be a, a there's going to be a, a small, a small drop tomorrow of uh, of pendants. Very small, but uh, pendants that are very rare, I think. Extremely rare and extremely beautiful and extremely meaningful as well. So uh, I'm going to sort of just say that tomorrow. I should have mentioned the start of the show. Also, too, I haven't mentioned this, but it's free shipping. Free international shipping on all orders. People people mention, oh, the shipping's probably insane. Well, we, we you know, the shipping's free. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, I haven't mentioned that before, but in any event... Not that I need to encourage people to order, but uh, you can't really keep anything in stock. But in any event, <laughs> I was going to mention that at the beginning of the show. I've carried away with 3,000 years of longing. All right, let's uh, let's continue now. 17 million, nothing's plausible. Have we looked at the underlying energies? Uh, three of swords and the nine of wands. Interesting cards. I'm not sure how relevant they are, but off the top of my head. But yeah, 17 million looks about right. If that's the estimate. Now, okay. How did she make most of that money? Like, how did she receive that money? Who gave that to her? How did she, I don't know, earn it? I don't, I don't know what to say about that. How did she earn it? The cards are hot. How did she earn it? Prince of Swords. This is a card we saw before. Uh, in today's reading, I didn't really touch on it because it didn't really make any sense, but uh, Ace of Wands, Six of Swords, Queen of Swords, this isn't hard work, folks, Two of Swords, didn't really earn it, Five of Cups, someone's loss was her gain, interestingly, I don't know what that's about, loss, loss and gain, loss became a power for her, so this is sort of, you know, someone who's able to speak, someone who can speak is not speaking, here, interestingly, uh, how did she, very strange, it's sort of being, stopping herself from talking, I think this is a gag order, that's what I think, this is a good, this is a good gag order on, uh, on Doria, but all right, six of swords, this is a travel idea, so travel, moving forward, moving people around, I, I don't quite understand this uh, energy here, um, moving money, no, it's not necessarily moving money around, that's not what I'm seeing, uh, it, it, to me, the real energies here are being prevented to speak, you know, she's not, she's not kind of able to, as a result of this money, say anything, which is, makes sense with the Ten of Swords, makes sense with yesterday's reading, makes sense with all that sort of thing, so, uh, should we ask, should we ask, did this money come through Archwell? Archwell. Now, someone is... I'm going to read this comment because this might shed some light on this. 
Now, okay, try the twi twisted tiara says try, try this for conspiracy. Lord famous fortunes. Dorito, Doria isn't really Meghan Markle's mum, but another actor as pics have been photoshopped off TMS and Doria. Doria is running a dodgy old people's home where she becomes the elderly person's probatory representative or something like that. But that company is dodgy AF. As below in the comments, has Meghan Markle hidden laundered money in Doria's name? This is this could be it sending money overseas or something like that. And she won't give it back and Meghan Markle can't do anything about it. Ooh, I see. Four of coins holding on to money. All right, that's a line of investigation today. Saying that Doria would have just fled and moved to another country with all that cash. Okay, maybe. Maybe she's blocking you. Okay, that's plausible. Plausible. This is the best. Okay, let's find out. So... Let's uh, let's actually ask that question. Has Doria been given money and Doria refuses to give it back to Megan? No wonder they're not speaking. No wonder. Is Doria refusing to return money to Megan? Wow, what a story that is. It's like you can't. What does that say? No honor amongst thieves. No honor amongst thieves at all. Cards are hot. Oh, do you want a hint for tomorrow? I want to give a hint, but nothing too sort of... So there's conflict over the money. I want to give something to uh, angels. There you go. I'm going to say that. One word, angels. That's the hint for tomorrow. In any event, moving forward. All right. One word hint for tomorrow. Angels and the best crystal, I think, of its color I've ever seen. Uh, five of wands, ace of cups. So the question again is, has Dory, uh, is Doria sort of holding on to money she's, and not giving it back? The chariot. Uh, King of Pentacles. Okay, money. Here we go. Money. Now we have the money. Oh, Hangman and the Magician. Okay, this looks very plausible. Why? Because there's there's a fight over this money. It's a lot of money. And there's a sort of someone's taken off with it. You know, offered it, taken off with it. I think this is extremely plausible from what I'm seeing. And look, so look this, the money's like in limbo. It's sort of... Uh, you know, kind of just it conjured conjured it out of thin air, and now it's in limbo. Basically, she's not giving it back. Uh, they're working on getting it back. King of Pentacles, yeah, a lot of money. So, I think this is actually quite likely that what has happened is Doria is Doria is Doria is Doria's taken Doria's fled with some money. That could explain as well the three of wands. Remember the card overlooking the ocean because there's money's overseas. The six of wands, money being moved overseas, things being moved overseas, maybe even Doria being moved overseas. I wonder who gave who gave Doria the money. Let's just let's run with this. I think we're onto something. I think we're onto it. Who gave Doria the money to you know squirrel away or whatever it was? Who gave Doria the money? Cards are hot. Okay, look at this. Underlying energy. Eight of coins, king of pentacles. So someone's there. Come, maybe it's a man that was giving her the money for some work or something like four of wands, giving the money to hold on to. We are. We have. We've hit it. We have hit the target. Four of coins, holding on to the money. Strength. She's controlling that money. She controls it. She holds on to it. Two of swords. Uh, this is her. Doesn't want to sort of engage with it. She's pretending and like it's not an issue. Like, oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I don't remember that money. Text message comes in. Hey, Dory, can we have the money back? Sorry, I don't know anything about that. Like playing dumb, right? King of Cups, a man. It was a man. It was a man and a woman. A man and a woman gave her the money. That's what it is. A man and a woman gave her the money. Uh, mostly a man's money though. So could it be Harry's money? And they're like, thought, let's hide it in Doria's name somewhere. Is this what's happened? Is it Harry's money? It's likely, I would say. But it's definitely a man's money. This could be Doria, by the way. This could be Doria, the Queen of Wands. I'd say it's more likely to be a man's money. Should we ask if it's Harry's money? I think we should ask if it's Harry's money. And that's what tea. This is invigorating me, this uh, this reading. I am invigorated. Whose money is this? Whose money? Was it Harry's money? Harry. Did Harry... Was Harry the source of the money? I think it was from the, uh, the Prince of Wands that we saw before. 
Remember that Harry's card, if he rings back, if he spreads back today. What, did Harry give her the money? Did the money come from Harry? Four of coins. There it is again. Holding on to the money. Two of swords. Don't know anything about it. Controlling interest. The same cards. Um, they're given to the mum, the empress, as a gift. Six of coins. Uh, and then it disappeared. Yep, yeah, it's Harry. I I'm, I'm, I'm convinced. I'm actually convinced. She's playing sort of like funny buggers with her. Don't know. I don't know anything about that. Given to them, given to her as like a gift. I'll hold on to this. Can you hold on to this? You know, it wasn't gifted to her like a six of coins. It was just say, like, oh, can you hold on to this? You know, and it's not here's the money. It's you know, hold on to this for me. You know, you're the mum. You can you can be in control of the money. You can hold on to the money. Uh, I'm ninety percent sure it was Harry, given from what I'm seeing. Ninety percent sure. So they're disappointed, obviously, money's disappeared, they can't see them where the money is, can't see where the money is, money's gone. Now, why did they, why did this man, we're assuming Harry, give the money to Doria in the first place? What was the reason for this to happen? What was the reason for this Marjum says, maybe they gave her money to cooperate. Now they want the money back saying no. Well, I think that half is true. They want the money back and she's saying, oh, I don't know anything about that. Uh, <laughs> gave them like money. We're going to find out now. What Was it cooperation? Was it, you know, children? Why did they give her so much money? It's an incredible amount of money. Cards are hot. Look at the underlying energy, three of wands there. It's like offshore, money's working offshore. That's kind of what I thought originally from when I saw those cards. Ten of wands, why? Holding onto the money was a burden, perhaps. Ace of swords, so what was the idea? The idea that they had was, you know, to get some advantage over giving her the money. Then they were going to bring her in as a partner. Look at that, three of coins, Harry, Meghan, and they got burnt. Nine, <laughs> big time, big time burnt. Some type of advantage they wanted. Holding on to the money for them was a problem. So they brought in Doria. They brought in Doria and they were experiencing big fat losses here with the Five of Cups. Very odd. Very odd for a mother-in-law to do that. I guess, I don't know, family member to do that. Is it odd? Probably not. Probably not. Probably happens all the time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Stung. Stung. I mean, okay. I want to know, what advantage did they get? And how, why was holding on to the money for them a burden? I want to go deeper uh, before I get into the questions and whatnot. Why was, you know, why was them holding on to their own money a burden? Surely you don't have to get your mo your mother-in-law involved to get a tax advantage or whatever. Let's find out. Let's see what the cards have to say. Why was holding on some money a burden? Sugars were out yesterday. Cards are hot. I saw in the comments. The sugars were out. Doria's, Doria's secret. The moon. The moon. The moon. Hide the money. Hide the money. Hide the money with the mother. They gifted the money, gave the money, a lot of money to the mother. Maybe even part of inheritance money here with the Ten of Coins. Make a lot of sense. Temperance. Temperance. Nine of Coins. Uh, the High Priestess. Okay, so it's about keeping a secret, keeping things quiet. Uh, it's about hiding. Basically, it's about hiding the money in, you know, in that way. Now, there must be reason for that. Um... Maybe there were many reasons, but definitely hiding the money. Boom, boom, boom. Keep it a secret. Keep it a secret. Hide the money. Tie up the money. But now Dory is, it looks like she's doing quite well. Here's the mother archetype. Here's the sort of family money that was given to her and it doesn't look like it's coming back. Uh, wow. That's quite a, that's quite a thing, isn't it? It's quite a thing. 
Doria won't give Rachel 10 million hidden in the bank account. And this is what Eve says. Doria refuses to give her back her money. There you go. I estimate it's more. Charles, and here we go. It's not Rachel's money. Gabriel says that Charles gave 9 million to Doria. Uh, Rachel stated she wasn't able to keep on working due to all the attention she was receiving since they announced their engagement. Yeah, Charles fell for it. All right. Let's, we're assuming it's Harry. Let's let's ask now. Did Charles, did Charles give Doria millions of dollars? Far out. Did Charles give Doria millions? Cards are hot. Uh, King of Wands, the Sun, the World, Four of Coins, the Lovers, yeah, uh, Six of Wands, and the King of Pentacles. This is rich man coming in. Was it Charles? Yeah. No, it came from it came from the it came from the Sussexes. It came from the Sussexes. I I don't think it's uh. I don't think it comes from Charles in, 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 in that way. So that's kind of my guess there on that. I don't see it comes from the king on this. You know, the king of wands, I don't think so. It's not It's not Charles. It's not Charles' archetype. It's this very Sussex energy coming in here. And it just looks like it's a lot of money. Uh, a lot of money. So I didn't get to see King Charles, by the way. Um, which is a shame. He kind of just really... I mean, Sydney and Canberra, really... Uh, I don't know if I'd sort of want to venture there just to see the king. To be honest with you, it's it's uh, if he was more north, then perhaps it would have been a good thing. But I definitely would have made an effort. But uh, apparently, he did meet some people from the public. I mean, what am I going to do? Rock up and say hi, uh, Lord Famous Fortune. It's a pleasure to meet you, Your, your Majesty. Uh, can you imagine looking his face? He'd probably like chuck it. He'd probably chuck it. I don't know. He probably wouldn't be so keen. He probably has a list of the, the naughty ones. I would say, is it, put me down in 50 years for a Barry Humphreys job. What is it? Dame, Dame, what's it? The one who got the, Barry Humphreys, he got the Order of Australia. I'm just saying that I'm working hard for the, uh, for the new, the new sort of, uh, the new generation of, of Australians out there in any event. Well, I mean, wasn't his character Dame Edna, whatever it was. I mean, in any event, in any event, in any event, what a champion. Barry Humphreys. All right. Let's uh, get into some questions. I would have seen him if it was, if it was a slightly different schedule. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not really keen to go to New South Wales to be honest, or, or the ACT. Uh, in any event, moving, moving on, moving on. Uh, yeah, I mean, I should have been in Parliament, right? Listening to that screeching, the screeching, the screeching. All right, let's go. Let's read some questions. Let's talk about three thousand years of longing and other topics. Um, uh, KJ says, hi, Lord Famous Fortunes. I would hate to be your neighbor. You seem to get a lot of strange things happening around the house. The movie Paranormal Activity springs to mind. I picture you grinding away at your crystals. Not, well, not grinding. Well, grinding away at the crystals, not at home, but yeah, any event. <laughs> On the silver, yeah, maybe. Uh, we don't want to be grinding the crystals at, at our place. <laughs> not, no, that's, that's not good. Not at that stage. If we grind the crystals, then we made a boo-boo. Uh, all right, trying to reveal their inner beauty while windows rattle and doors creak and white orbs hide. Yeah, yeah, it's going there. They're actually, honestly, there's so much protection going on around here. Uh, the neighbors are probably, the neighbors' homes are protected as well, I'd say. Uh, I, the, the, the naughty ones don't come inside uh, at this place. So I think the neighbors, uh, the neighbors, the neighbors in the in the in the beginning. What I find is, there, you know, if you move and you start doing heavy protection, the neighbors can get a bit inflamed for a little while because the energy is so strong. Sort of, whatever's around them will start to be irritated, but then that'll clear and then maybe settle right down. So that's what I found. Uh, and then sort of you get a tranquility in the neighborhood, or at least around the house. Let's say. All right, Sandy says I I forgotten. I'd seen the movie before. We're talking about 3,000 Years of Longing. Lord Famous Fortune spoke about it. I thought it was a great movie, but I remember thinking when I saw the movie, thinking, aren't jinn uh, evil slash demonic entities from the Islamic religion? I thought I remembered that they could be conjured up and sent to people to cause destruction and chaos to their lives. And once their host dies, they can transfer to another host. Uh, my Reiki master told me years ago about removing one. 
quite scary. Interesting to hear what Lord of Famous Fortunes uh, said about the Jin movie. We'd like to hear more. Very interesting. Now, you okay? The way Jin is written in English is J I N N. There's no D sound in the in the Arabic law. Let's say the Arabian law. Uh, it's an, in, you don't transliterate it with a D sound. It's just Jin, like J I N N, right? As I said. But uh, yeah, they're so they're from these sort of let's say. Um, Arabian tradition, I would say, it probably goes it goes quite far back. These entities, they're well known for a long time. And if you if you've taken the first course that I've put out, the removing possession course, you'll know how to remove the entities if there's a possession or an occupation, because there's a difference, right? They can just be inside the body without actually possessing the person. They can just like take up residence. Uh, but you also know that every culture on Earth has a name for them, except really our own, because in our modern culture, it's classified as mental illness, right? Not a not a sort of real objective phenomenon. Like we don't recognize in our culture, apart from the fringe elements of it, all the religious elements, our mainstream culture doesn't accept that those entities exist or the spirit world exists. So it comes falls under mental illness. I talk about in the course. So in any event, uh, I mean, that there's names for them in basically every culture. And I list them, many cultures throughout history and current cultures in the course and the names, you know, that they mention. So for example, in Hebrew, they call them Sheddom is the name of these entities. So there's another sort of, let's say, uh, language and society based in the Middle East that sort of, you know, don't use the word jinn, right? Uh, Aboriginal Australians have a word for them. You know, the Native Americans have a word. I mean, I list, I list many going back to even Mesopotamia. There was words for them. And then they're fire spirits, basically. But yes, they can be sent to people to cause destruction and chaos in their lives. You're exactly right. What A lot of what you said is spot on. Um, yeah, once their host dies, they can transfer to another host. This is basically the, the f reincarnation. So what, I'll, re I'll say that again. You've said once the host dies, this is when they're possessing someone, they transfer to another host. That's exactly what the Tibetan understanding of reincarnation is if you actually understand... And just talk to people that know about what they're talking about. So what happens is when the Dalai Lama passes, <clears throat> the spirit that, are, that is possessing him moves to a child and carries those memories of the previous lifetime in that spirit because the spirits live for thousands of years in many cases. Unless, unless you perform a powerful invocation on, you know, and they just sort of turn to dust, right? And that's the end of them. So uh, in any event, a lot of what you said is true. Uh, and we would call them in English demons, right, basically. But they're not all evil in in the classic understanding. Many of them are. And most of the ones people interact with are incredibly evil and shouldn't be interacting with human beings and need to be, let's say, kicked out. So there are religious entities. It's true. There are Christian ones, Hindu, many Hindu ones. When you go to India, you can you'll know all about them. All the Hindu uh, entities that are there. That's why I kind of... Entity is more of a neutral word. But yeah, demon in English. Entity. Jinn, Sheddom, on, on and on, etc, etc. So, ghost, I suppose, maybe. But ghost doesn't sort of, you know, describe it. The entity in that show, 3000 Years Longing, is is a demon, in my opinion. He's a trickster and he's, he's really misrepresenting who he is and, you know, all the rest of it. If an entity comes and is willing to have, you know, sex with you, there's a problem. Okay, I'm going to say that straight up. Uh, that's a, not a good thing. And some people actually marry those entities. Um, people that are going down the dark side. And they, you know, men will marry female entities. That's a famous thing. Like, what's what's the whole Lilith thing? Lilith is, an, you know, a female entity. And she's not there to, like, kill people and all the rest of it. But it's, like, to drain people's en energy. And, and it's all, all on a sexual level, basically. And uh, there's a very, Lilith's, Lil Lilith entities have a very sort of particular look to them in the astral realm. They all have highly sexualized look. They don't come across as like your sort of your stay at home mum. <laughs> they don't, they're like highly sort of sexualized look to them. But uh, in any event, uh, just to give you a sort of rough understanding of it. Okay, now this is, this is, this is an interesting question. Jabo has said here, question, Solomon wooed the Queen of Sheba with music. And I'm going to talk about this in a moment. I'll read you a full question. This has historically been the history of music. David calm, calmed King Saul with music. The kings and queens of history had chamber musicians. I think this could be studied to see how hip-hop music was used to seduce the victims of the P. Diddy Empire. That's interesting. 
it's probably more the ketamine, but I don't know any of it. Well, drugs and music, right? It's well known. They go in hand in hand. Uh, music can be used for good or evil. It's the same notes, same beats, but it can be wielded by the entities to seduce a room of people or an entire generation. Can it be wielded by entities? Yeah, absolutely. It can make people more easier to possess them. Uh, I'd like to know your thoughts on this. Okay, so there's two things here. Music is a form of the craft, let's say. It, it certainly is, and it can be used for good, it can be used for evil, and it can, because the, the, the ears, the ears are a direct entrance to the soul, right, or to the heart, whatever you want to say, right? So if you've got a sort of a uh, hip hop song. It's very bassy. It, it it vibrates the root chakra. You can imagine you want to root afterwards, right? Okay, that's kind of how it works. Because if alcohol is involved, which is enhancing the root chakra, da 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 da, you get the you get the message, right? Hip hop music in you know let's say modern sort of style. You know, originally, it was a bit more sort of people like to have a message and all the rest of it. Uh, but you know, it's a lot of it's just sort of really root chakra based and debasing, right? So to the root chakra so yeah absolutely it can be used as a, a type of spell you know think of it the words they're using it's it's uh, with music and vibration it's going straight in and uh acting like a type of spell so yeah and definitely entities love music when it's played at concerts and stuff like that just sort of get so excited like froth on it basically okay so yeah definitely 100 percent. now that what you said here is solomon wooed the queen of Sheba with music now i'm going to tell you half a secret okay today solomon in Re solomon <laughs> All right, I'm going to tell you half a secret, so listen carefully. Solomon didn't attract the Queen of Sheba with music. Solomon attracted the Queen of Sheba with the greatest name of God. And that has the secret of attracting hearts. That's what draw. That's what drew Sheba to him. Okay, I'm giving you some, some like I said, half a, half a secret, right? I'm not going to tell you what the name he used was, but for him... And for well, us, if we would invoke that name, it would have the same effect on hearts, uh, in 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 a, in a sense. So, so I'm not going to speak of what it is now, but I'm just saying for knowledge sake, it wasn't the music that drew Sheba to Solomon, because it wasn't what the the demon said in the movie. Solomon didn't travel to Sheba. That's incorrect. Sheba went to so Solomon, but the reason she came was because he invoked that greatest name. On her, which is or the story of the ring, right? Of Solomon, the, engraved on the ring was the greatest name of God, and that the secret of that name is that it activates on everyone on an individual basis according to their potential and their capacity. And it just so happens Solomon's capacity for uh, for not being seduced, let's say, um, or overrun by the material world was perhaps far greater than any man alive, right? And that's why he was given that kingdom. So, in any event. Whereas you or I, if we were to have what the kingdom of Solomon would be destroyed by it. In any event, there's a lot of argument of what happened to Solomon in the end. But uh, in any event, I uh, there's a lot of demonic propaganda about that as well. So let's uh, to sum up, Solomon, Solomon invoked the greatest name of God to attract Sheba's heart. Let that be known. Which I will not speak on this broadcast, uh, lest it be abused. So in any event... In any event, it's a very interesting story and uh, a very interesting story indeed. But yeah, your, your point about music is so well taken that it is indeed a a form of witchcraft, let's say. It really is, in, in a sense. You can change, you can completely influence someone's emotion with music uh, or, you know, on an internal basis in a very quick way that's just, just so profound, particularly when drugs are added, if you think about it, right? whatever that may be, alcohol or all of the things they're legalizing these days, excuse me, and, uh, you know, what would, what would he did? He'd be the, you know, the, the sort of hypnotic sedatives, I suppose, you know, in the baby oil to get people to lose themselves, right? And and also make themselves more open to possession as well. That's a, that's a dirty little secret. And, and they even say at Taylor Swift concerts, right? Oh, I, I lost three hours of time. Like hundreds of people, thousands of people saying, I lost three hours of time. I don't know what happened to me. Uh, yeah, probably were possessed during the show. <laughs> probably, probably, probably. I was watching um, the other day, I was watching this show. It was like the Music Awards or whatever, just for a few minutes. Uh, and there was some seriously demonic uh, performances happening. And Lilith style invocations, you know, butterflies and snakes, all the rest of it. Those are the Lilith symbols because she has wings and flies, right? That's 
Mesopotamian style winged female demon goddess, right? Who needs a good zapping, uh, basically. <laughs> she needs a good cooking. Uh, and, and I've cooked many of her subordinates, let that be known, in the hundreds probably now. Um, so, uh, no shortage of them though. Uh, let's, let's say this, that, uh, you know, those, those award shows are sort of like open, it's imagery as well as the music, right? And that's kind of a problem. But yeah, the, I, I did notice that there's sort of the, I, I could feel the energy in the room when I was looking at that. And this, the, the entities that would have been there were just sort of like an ecstatic. You can imagine the, the, the energy that they would feel and. It's like a party for them, basically. So, all right, there's a little, there's a little thing. Is there anyone else I, I can respond to while I'm here? Uh, I don't know. I've said a lot. I've said a lot about uh, three thousand years of longing, entities, all the rest of it. Arabian Nights is a really classic, you know, set of stories. The Arabian Nights, right? Thousand One Nights about the the jinn or the entities, basically, you know, and, and those so that Arabian lore around it because, damn, they knew a lot about it. Uh, the topic and a lot of you know a lot of black magic came out of the Middle East you know that's where it began in Babylon it's still it still carries carries on there so it is what it is and that's that's the story that is the story so I am going to update the second course for entities that are hanging around and make that invocation just a little bit stronger uh, and uh, we'll do that at some stage. So that's the second course. There's two invocations, a curse-breaking one and one that returns magic and, and destroys entities that are hanging around. So if they're in the house, uh, then you'd use the second course. If they're, in the, if they're in the body, then you'd use the first course. So there's a sort of a difference there uh, according to the efficacy of the invocations that I've provided and that I have uh, a lot of experience invoking. So let that be known. I believe that the entity in 3000 years of longing was a devil, but they, the, the, de the demonic entities oftentimes will misrepresent themselves. Like, Oh, I'm here to help you, you know, giving you three wishes and all the rest of it, you know, all that type of thing. It's a misrepresentation. Oh, you know, Solomon treated me unfairly. I was just innocently watching him make love. I was put in a bottle. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so, my man. And you were stuck in a bottle for 2,500 years. Uh, oh, the other thing I want to say, this is going, this will be going in the, in, in the analysis that I do eventually on it. When that second, it was a second story, the, the person, he was the young lady who got pregnant by the prince or the, the king or whatever. She threw himself, she threw herself off the balcony. Um, I'm gonna have to talk about that scene because he's, you know, he says a devil came, a spider with the eyes, a devil came and stopped me interfering with that. And I, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's something that's a gaslight. I think that's a gaslight on that one. That's in any event, in, I just don't trust it. So I'd love to talk about that in, I should have to probably go over it. So you feel understand, but in any event, I hope you've got something out of today's show. I've had a good time. I hope you're well. I'll see you in the comments.